Gus, today's top news stories with Charles Bandreth and Camilla Tomini. Uh, Hi. David and Sue have stayed with us because the first story that we are going to cover is the Nicola Bully case continues after her disappearance whilst on a dog walk nine days ago, last seen at 10 past nine on the 27th of January, walking in St Michael's on Wire, Lancashire, having earlier dropped her daughters, who are six and nine at school. Lancashire police believe um, that uh, she accidentally fell into the river. Now, there's been a, an enormous amount of, um, I'm sure to the family, unhelpful uh, social media activity, accusations, cast mm. uh, what must be the sort of horrifying time for them um, and so we're just going to ask uh, Sue and, and, and David uh, what, what, guys what are you making of this so far? Well I just think uh, it's not helpful people speculating and I think the police it would be helpful they just said we're keeping an open mind because nobody really knows you can never exclude third party involvement I know that I dealt with the case 25 years ago Ricky Real who drowned and the family, you know, were put offside because at the initial investigation, they were told it was an accident, but you can never exclude third party involvement. However, there may be things that, that we don't know that the police know. So my advice would be, please stop speculating, let the police do their job. And if anybody's got any information whatsoever, then contact the police. But until such time, um, they find Nicola. I just think it's a really um, bewildering story and it's just terribly sad. Um, and everyone needs to keep an open mind um, until, you know, we find out what actually has happened. And speculating about family or friends mm. is not helpful. So you need can, to deal with the evidence. Can I just ask, Sue, I mean, we, we discuss true crime on the show so many times and yeah. people have this fascination for true crime. It's incredibly popular. But sometimes when, when you are watching a real case in real time unfold, that the sofa sleuths who love real crime uh, actually can seriously damage a family by playing the same game online? Armchair detectives or those people on Twitter who don't know all the facts, please stop it because the police are doing their utmost, their best for the family and that will put the family offside. Um, so unless you've got some proper evidence or you know something, you've seen something, then don't speculate. Let the police do their job because at the moment you've got a grieving family they don't know where their loved one is. Mm. And to be on the other side of that, you know, pointing fingers at people is not helpful. So my advice would be let the police do their job. They need to keep, keep an open mind and I'm sure they're doing everything in their power to try and find Nicola. Yeah. And would you agree with that as well? Um, I think what I see, I, I don't disagree with anything that Sue has just said. I, I, think, <laughs> I think that um, my um, worry is that there does seem to be some breakdown of communication between the family and the police, and particularly the role of the family liaison officer is important here. But the family were actively uh, giving information to the media that they disagreed with some of the police's working hypothesis. And, uh, and then, of course, have subsequently been giving footage and photographs to the media. That implies that we've got some um, disconnect there mm. between what's happening that the family would like to see happening and what the police are prepared to talk about uh, and share with the family. Mm. Can I just say one thing? It's really difficult, and I've dealt with many families, you know, young people who fall in the river, particularly the River Thames, and it is very hard for any family to think that your loved one might have simply slipped and drowned and it's an accident. It's very difficult to come to terms with that. So. Whilst, you know, we do need to keep an open mind, it is very hard for the police as well because, you know, they, they don't want to speculate and they're going with the evidence as they've assessed the evidence. We're, we're not party to what's gone on. There may be other things that the police know that we don't know. And armchair detectives and Twitter people who are not being very helpful, you've got a family there who haven't got their loved one back yeah. and you've got two little girls who are waiting for their mummy to come back. So I Thank think, you. why don't we all back off? Unless you know something, shut up. OK, well, that's right. very Thank you. strong Thank point. You Thank you. Let's just hope we get some answers for that family, that's for sure. Um, let's move on to a different story now. Today we'll see the biggest round of NHS walkouts in parts of England today as nurses and ambulance staff strike. Uh, although under trade union laws, emergency care will be provided. I guess the situation here, though, is the Welsh Government made an improved offer and strikes were called off. There's been some progress in Scotland as well, but in England there is a stalemate in 73 trusts. It does make you wonder what's going on in Westminster at the moment? Well, there isn't a conversation going on. I think that's mm -hmm. the, what the union bosses are saying, that they can't sit down and thrash this out. I think Rishi Sunak, with the current economic climate, is in a 
catch-22 situation because he can't offer inflation-linked pay rises and actually inflation is now 10% but in a year's time could be hopefully less than half that. So how do you then implement a pay offer like that with the finances as stretched as they are? I think from the public's perspective, there is sympathy, certainly, with nurses. There may not be as much sympathy with some of the other striking workers. It's a bit of an ongoing debate, isn't there, about rail workers, because actually, comparatively, they're quite well paid. Um, it's a really, really tricky one. Uh, there had been a hint, I think, in today's papers that the nurses initially asked for 19% and would consider taking half of that. But again, they're arguing that they're not at the table with the people that they need to be debating with. I suspect something will happen. Now that the Scottish have settled and the Welsh seem to have settled, I think we're going to get a compromise that will involve next year. Mm -hmm. So the government can say, we can't change things for this year, Maybe there will be something extra as a kind of um, emergency special payment. But let's look at next year when we may be able to do something more. But they've got to start talking. I was going to say, they better yeah. start talking first. Um, this is a, a, a breaking news story that happened overnight. Uh, the powerful earthquake um, that, at the moment, has killed more than 600 people, injured thousands mm. in wow. uh, southern Turkey and, uh, and northern uh, Syria. Quite terrifying pictures of, uh, of the, uh, the earthquake. Um, hundreds of people still believed to be trapped under the rubble. Um, some have said that this could be Turkey's largest earthquake on record. Wow. Um, uh, European leaders have promised to help the region. Italy, there was a tsunami warning. These are live pictures we're seeing now from one of the many scenes that there are. Italy withdrew its tsunami warning. Um, that was uh, on alert for, for some time. And I think over, over the next few days and weeks, this is something we'll hear a lot of. There'll be a lot of aid agencies saying, we need your help. We are so UK-centric that we forget some of the horrors that exist in the world. This part of the world, I think there are literally millions of Syrian refugees in this particular part of the world, the epicentre of where mm. this frightening earthquake, 7.8 magnitude, has taken place. I mean, Turkey is the world's largest host of refugees, with 3.7 million refugees in Turkey. So it's a terrible thing happening in a very difficult, traumatised part of the world. And also, I think, sort of, yeah, from the comfort of one's own home, not appreciating a situation where there was some footage, very um, disturbing footage online, you know, of people trying to get their children out of rubble. I yeah. mean, it's That's just beyond horrible. comprehension, isn't it? Mm. And these things happen, and I suppose we always think they happen to other countries and other places because, fortunately, we don't necessarily suffer from earthquakes, but... Of course, there will be an impetus. We're always very generous, actually, the British, when it yeah. comes to, mm. to trying to contribute to emergencies and trying to help out rescue efforts overseas. I think we always do step up, and I'm sure we this will again this time. That we'll be asked, I think, in the coming My days to, uh, to do. Um, what about this story? Oh, uh, from the grim, the truly grim, to the wonderfully ridiculous. <laughs> Gosh. So this is Sasha Walpole. She's come forward claiming to be the old woman who oh, took Prince Harry's virginity, this. despite only being two years old at the time. You're bristling with excitement. Oh, I'm so the I'm pleasure of you... this. I can't wait to see the movie. Uh, <laughs> this, for those people who have not been following this, a young woman, <laughs> Sasha Walpole, is, turns out, to be the older woman. She was only about a year older. She's On the eve of her old. 19th birthday, yeah. she was 18, he was 17. This was the tryst. Rather a short tryst. They were both tipsy. They went out for a fag behind the pub. Yeah. They got carried away. He began the kissing, apparently. They ended up on the ground pretty quickly. <laughs> and she, 21 years later, <laughs> feeling rather exposed by Harry, thought when well, she first told her dad, he was traumatised by it. Particularly, he didn't want the details of her slapping Harry's no, bottom. No, no. But no, can I tell you, again, I'm so, I can't wait. This weekend, I'm going for that Wiltshire field. I'm going to find the pub. I'm going to suggest Recre them picnics. Recreate it? No. You, uh, Harry and lightning will strike twice. Harry Oh, no, <laughs> Actually, my <laughs> wife and I. Mrs. Brand, we we should, so. yeah, why not? And we're going to try. We're going to have Harry and Sasha picnics. Did and we then need? We can go and recreate the magic. <laughs> Did we need? Young though? love. I counted it up on Sunday. There were 17 pages of news about this story. And what I found interesting with regard to the age gap, the age gap is bigger between Harry and Meghan than it is him and Sasha. The so why was he saying older woman? I didn't quite understand woman. any of that. But also, I mean, also technically, she was old, older. She was older. Not, it was, not it what was kind imagine. of implied that it was a bit of a Mrs Robinson situation. Yes, exactly. What everyone was there to believe. Um, but we wouldn't have known Sasha yeah. Walpole's name unless she told us. But no. So did yes. she need to come forward here? Well, I think people were speculating about it and then I note that it's the Sun on Sunday and the Mail on Sundays.
got this story together. So I'm so presumably she she's that. been remunerated. Why not? I mean, if she was the woman who took his video, he didn't need to put it in the no. book. I mean, what he did and, in... and apparently she wasn't warned that it was no. in. The no. Book. So in the book, you know, obviously he then set the hairs racing after whoever this older yeah. woman was. We then had Rupert Everett in our paper at the weekend saying, oh, I know who it was. And it wasn't behind a pub, it was on a ski slope. So it's been the talk of Spare, yes. hasn't it, along with some of the other revelations. In fairness, it, I don't blame her at all. No, he is, he is the prince story. of privacy. That was, you know, I want my private life. He revealed this to the world and he gave sufficient evidence, the pub, etc., the age he was. People apparently locally were speculating. She had never said a word. She behaved yeah, like a lady. Her, actually. And she, she seems to be great fun. And she says, if he gets in touch, they're going to go back, not necessarily to the same uh, pub. I'm but, not but sure Megan. And... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure Megan would want just, to uh, just finally, have a um, reunion drink. Just, I don't just know. finally here, when you go out for your field tryst yes. in a, with a pub, good. will you be taking a hot water bottle? And why have you brought them? You may remember that I told you last week about the boiler breaking at yes. home and how yes. cold we were, yes. and how I was using the hot water bottles that my mother had kept yes. after the war. And, we said, and you do told that. me it's not safe. Yes. The, it, so I have since been inundated with hot water bottles from people. Thank oh, you very much. Your jumper. And look. <laughs> That, if I may say oh, so, somebody, a lovely lady sweet. called Chloe Haywood has sent me this. It's my Chloe. favourite so far. But I have now got, uh, I shall be sending them to giving them to people. So no you, more. I'm taking them, most of them to charities. Thank you very much for all the hot water bottles. But please don't send any. But enough is enough. I've got one to cuddle with. <laughs> uh, if we spend a night out in that field, you we might, might need take a few. it. We might yeah, need yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you yes. need a few. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.